Hello brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, as we're doing this really updated prayer request, <laughs> I wave at the camera and Declan, my dog jumps down, tries to come over. No, 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 Declan, the new dog Declan comes over. Uh, brothers and sisters in Christ, I was going to do a quick prayer request video and a thanks, uh, you know, a testimony again on answered prayers. Uh, we thank God for unanswered prayers, but we also thank God for answered prayers. We need to make sure we're doing that, brothers and sisters Christ. So as we always start our prayer requests, we start with uh, what the Word of God says about prayer, okay? Uh, your King James Bibles. Okay, 1 Thessalonians 5.17 tells us we're supposed to pray without ceasing. Why is prayer so important? It's, it's very important. It's, it's a foundation in a Bible-believing, God-fearing man brother or sister in Christ's life, your, your walk with the Lord. Okay, one of the biggest prayer requests, I'll throw this out there right now, that I always have that we need to be praying hardcore for the brethren is that they stay in prayer and they stay in the Word of God daily. They don't get distracted by what's going on in the world. They don't get distracted by the fighting and, and bickering and, and name calling and mocking and backbiting and whispering and, and bitterness and the hate that seems to be infesting the body of Christ. Don't get distracted by all the drama that's going on, okay? Stand for the Word of God. I've always told this to brothers and sisters of Christ. If you think I'm wrong on something, uh, I got an email for the ministry. If you got prayer requests, testimonies, I've got an email. That's why I have. That's why it's called Prayer and Testimonies. Uh, 2018 is when I set it up, uh, you know, at Outlook.com, okay? You can uh, email me prayer requests. Uh, and then testimonies of answered prayers, testimonies of how things, God did things for you, testimonies on how you failed the Lord and God got you back up on your feet again, your testimony on how you came to salvation, okay, how God saved you, a wicked man, woman, like you and me. Okay, I have my testimony on this channel. But also, Brothers of Christ, if you disagree with me on the scriptures, hit me up on the email. Okay, talk with me. I, I've always said this. This is how I've always said this. We will talk and we'll find out where I'm wrong and where the Bible's right. But I guarantee you this, brother, says Christ, without a shadow of a doubt, without even flinching, this book, the King James Bible, God's perfect written word in English, is always right. That's what I'm going to promise you going into it. This book is always right. This man is not always right. <laughs> okay? If you disagree with me, Email me, okay? But nowadays, it just seems in the body of Christ, brothers and Christ, there's just a lot of backbiting and whispering, name-calling, mocking, a lot of hate, a lot of bitterness, and a lot of division, based off of division. I believe this, and I believe that. And we all, it's important to believe the right thing. It is very important to believe the right thing. And I'm going to stand firm to the truth, and there's nothing wrong with standing firm to the truth, but remember what the Bible says. In meekness, in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. In the book of uh, first and se first, second, and third John, in the book of those books, it talks about how we're supposed to love our brothers and sisters in Christ. It talks about how you can kick a brother in Christ or sister in Christ out of your fellowship because they start becoming worldly. Sin and wickedness, idolatry. Uh, they start falling away from true doctrine that they once stood for. They fall away to false doctrines. But you're still to admonish them as a brother. Don't treat them like an enemy. What's going on in the body of Christ, brother? Sir? We're treating everyone like enemies. It says, no, you admonish them as a brother. As a brother. And you know what? We're starting to stray from this book, brother, says Christ. Doing things God's way and living God's way. It's all about debating and arguing and fighting. Don't you just stand for the truth? Do you want the truth, brother, says Christ? Okay, I'm just going to give the truth. If you don't want it, okay, there's the door. Not that I'm being mean about it. It's like, if you don't like what I have to say when it comes to the Word of God, and you're not willing to put forth the effort to try to correct me properly through the Scriptures and meekness out of love, with the, I always say this, but right, the Bible, this, I didn't mean to talk about this, but the Bible talks about how the whole point of correct, correction, all scriptures given by inspiration is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. The whole point of rebuking somebody and correcting somebody is to build them back up and get them back on their feet. 
That's supposed to be our heartfelt desire. When we preach the gospel to somebody, our heartfelt desire is to see them get saved, not go to hell. To see them get saved. Now, if they reject it, they're going to go to hell. I'm not going to lie to them. You're going to go to hell if you reject the true plan of salvation. If you reject true biblical repentance as it applies to salvation, and you refuse to believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross here, not head knowledge, having the knowledge of righteousness. No, you're supposed to believe with, with the heart. Man believeth unto righteousness with the heart. Confess both in prayer and with the mouth. Confession is made unto salvation and ask God to save you. When you preach the gospel, there's some people that have that attitude. Well, go to hell then. Go to hell then. Go to hell then. Go to hell then. I don't preach the gospel so I can see everyone go to hell. I preach the gospel to see people get saved. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all, all should come to repentance. All should come to repentance, brother, says Christ. That should be our attitude. Lately, brethren, it just, it just seems like this pride, this bitterness, this hate is just infesting the body of Christ. I've seen mentors turn on people. I see men in ministry turn on people with, with, with zero love, no charity, no love for the body of Christ, no love for the Word of God, no love for our Savior Jesus Christ and how they're acting. I've seen brethren do the same thing. Not just men in ministry, but brethren. And brothers and sisters in Christ. Sorry for going off a little bit, but pray without ceasing. Why is it so important to stay in fellowship with God and making sure that you're hiding God's word? Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. In other words, it's God's word that I live by. But today, this is getting put over here, and it's gathering dust. And everyone's over here fighting and bickering and, and getting distracted by what's going on in the world, how bad it's getting in the world, the economy, this. But you guys need to take some time to get back to this. Right here. Get back to praying. Spend a lot of time praying with the Lord. Ask Him to open the Scriptures with you. Ask Him to evaluate your life. Lord, am I living for you? And I wanted to do this in a... Um, in a study, uh, but I'll probably do it in a study, uh, but I'm still going to mention it a little bit here. I was watching a study about Enoch, and you know what Enoch, it said about Enoch? Enoch had a testimony. You know what that testimony was, brother, says Christ? That testimony was that he pleased God. He's not pleasing this body of flesh. It's not about me, myself, and I. i got to please myself. It wasn't that he had a testimony that he pleased the world. i got to please my wife, my husband, my children, my family, uh, my neighbors, my co-workers. i got to compromise to please the world, which you see going on in these Babel buildings left and right. I call them Babel buildings. They call them church buildings. But the Bible says church is a called out assembly, and that called out assembly is the body of Christ. When you get saved, you are in church. If you're part of the church, you're in church when you truly get saved. But these battle buildings are all about compromising to please the world. Okay. Enoch, what was his testimony, brother says Christ? His testimony is that he pleased God. Now, I don't like I said, I didn't mean to put this together, but the Bible talks about how uh, our service, we were created to serve God and obey Him, to keep His commandments. Okay. To live for Him and keep His commandments. To keep His Word. Okay. Brothers and Christ, what's hurting the bride of Christ today? I think we're getting a little bit too distracted away from this. This is no longer becoming our foundation in all matters of faith and practice. Faith and practice. Hide God's Word in your heart. So you can live it. You don't hide God's word in your heart so you can live any way you want to live. You hide God's word in your heart because you want to live God's word. You want to please God. Now Enoch, the whole point while I was looking at that study, Enoch gets caught up and he's a representation of the body of Christ getting caught up before the time of Jacob's trouble. And his testimony that he had was that he pleased God. 
In these last days, brothers and sisters Christ, when we get caught up, the catching away of the body of Christ could happen any day now. Don't let anybody steal your crown. Don't let anybody tell you to take off your helmet for a hope of salvation. A hope of salvation. We've got studies on this. Looking for that blessed hope. To how the day of Christ is at hand, and that's how we're supposed to live. Jesus could come back any day now. What's your testimony? Is your testimony that you pleased God? Or is your testimony that you pleased yourself because you're all about living your dream life? Having the things that you want to do, feeding your flesh, being a people pleaser like Saul was, King Saul. Like Pontius Pilate, what is truth? And he decided to please the crowd instead of doing what was right. And handed Jesus over to be crucified. King Saul, he was commanded to do something. He sits there and he just has this, I come, brothers of Christ, I'm sorry for going off a little bit. I come across brethren out there that they have the same de uh, deer in the headlights look that Saul had. I am obeying the word of God. Let me show you how you're not obeying the word of God. Oh, but, 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 but I am obeying the word of God. No, you're not. But, but, but I am. It's like in one ear, out the other. Whew, right over their heads. They're hard to deal with, but I've seen this among brethren, not the lost world, not these false converts, these wolves in sheep's clothing, these false religions out there. Brothers of Christ, I'm seeing this among us. Let me show you in the Word of God where God commands, abstain from all appearance of evil, but I am obeying the Word of God. It says over here, be not drunken, but I am obeying the Word. It says here, you're not supposed to have idolatries, and you're not supposed to worship false gods through false, hel like, holidays. I call them holidays, holidays. Uh... Let me show you over here where we're supposed to be looking for that imminent return of Jesus Christ. A lot of brethren have turned their back on it. They're not looking anymore for Jesus Christ to come back. They're looking for the time of Jacob's trouble. Let me show you where you're not living right and doing right. But I am obeying the word of the God. I am obeying the word of the Lord. Remember, you have to go back. If you don't know that story, go back and read about Samuel when he confronts Saul. And he have all these sheep. What are all these sheep that I hear? That he was supposed to go in and, and to slaughter all the evil people and wicked people. King Hagag, along with the people, along with the animals, he was not to take any spoil, any like spoil like treasures. He was supposed to wipe everything out. And Saul's sitting there and he hears the bleeding of the sheep. And But I kept them to sacrifice unto the Lord. You haven't kept the commandment of God. But I have commit, kept the commandment of God. That's a big problem, brothers and sisters. That's what I'm dealing with lately. And I know I have brothers and sisters in Christ out there that you know what I'm talking about. Sorry for going off too much. What's going on? We're getting away from this. It's no longer thus saith the Lord. It's yea hath God said. A better rendering would be I can be as God's knowing good and evil. I can decide what God's commands are. In other words, I'm the one giving the commands. And I'm just claiming of, I am keeping the commandments of God. Brothers, sisters in Christ, pray for the body of Christ in these last days. It seems, and I know some people will say, well, you're just blowing it out of proportion. And, and you're just, you know, it's just you. I don't see that kind of a problem in the body of Christ. That's just you. Go ahead and live your, your la-la dream life, okay, you know, and fable land. Okay, the body of Christ we desperately need to get back to praying hardcore, and we need to get back to studying, reading God's Word, and hiding it in our hearts more. And that's my motivation, that's my prayer request, that's my ultimate prayer request, brothers and sisters Christ, that the body of Christ gets back to prayer, gets back to reading, reading God's Word and hiding it in their hearts, gets back to their fellowship with the Lord, where the Lord comes first, and pleasing God comes first before pleasing anyone else. It's not wrong to please your wife. It's not wrong to please your husband. It's not, long to, it's not wrong every once in a while to please your children. Let them have what they want sometimes. I'm saying when you start pleasing them over God, in other words, what you're doing for them goes against the Word of God, but it's more important to please them. It's more important to compromise to please the world instead of standing for God's Word and saying, no, that's wrong. God says it's wrong. I'm not going to... Go with the, along with that. I'm not going to support it in any way. And I'm not going to let you think that I think it's okay in any way, shape, or form. Today I'm watching people, these fake Christians, 
where they're talking about what's going on. I had to turn that all off for a while. I've been trying to stay away from it for weeks and weeks now. Uh, people just drama, talking about the world and the bad things that are going on in the world. And one of the things is this how sodomy is out of control here in America and in the world. And these are supposed to be Christians, and they're sitting there, if you want to do that over there, that's your free will, and that's your freedom here in America. That's not the attitude of a Christian. You're an abomination in the sight of God. You need to repent, because if you die in your sins, you will go to hell. You need to repent and believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. That is an abomination. You're an abomination in God's sight, and you're an abomination in my sight. That's the attitude of someone who's truly saved and where this book comes first. But all these people, well, if you want to do that over there, that's you, that's you. Lord, I, I talk to the Lord all the time. I say, Lord, we are in the last days. You can't. It's, all these false Christians, Christians that are falling away, and given in to compromise. Maybe there's a way we can just compromise. Yeah, yeah, it's wrong, but and I don't want to have anything to do with it, but maybe there's a way we can compromise. What does the Bible say about being lukewarm? Brothers and sisters Christ, I don't want to go into a huge, I'm not trying to go into a teaching. It's just, it's been on my heart lately, brothers and sisters Christ, to, to really just say this. We need to get back on fire for the Lord. We need to get back on fire for prayer. We need to get back on fire for reading the Word of God and studying the Word of God, hiding it in our heart and living it. And we need to get back on fire for preaching the Gospel. Handing out Gospel tracts. Making Gospel videos. Getting back, I got some gospel videos, and I talk about the plan of salvation. I'll take time, and we need to take time to actually spell out salvation. Some people will, I remember brethren online, they'll always, when it comes to preaching the gospel, they'll stop and go, oh, i got a video on this on my channel, just go, go to my video. Take time to preach the gospel. Most people aren't going to take time to hunt down another video. If you got someone's attention in the video that you're doing right now, like I'm doing right now, you preach the gospel. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrows of the world worketh death. You need to come to God in a broken and contrite spirit, having sorrow for your personal sins. If a lost person's watching this, if a false convert's watching this, that's never had this experience, you need to come to Him broken and having sorrow in your heart for sinning against Him. Ever regret, regret sinning against Him? Having sorrow for the consequences because of your sins, you're going to hell to burn for all eternity. That's your destination. That's where you're heading. And only one person, the God of all creation that created you, you go to Him and say, Lord, I am so sorry for my sins. I'm sorry that I'm on my way to hell, Lord. I don't want to go to hell, but I deserve it, Lord. Oh, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. God Almighty, who created us, has provided a way for us to go to heaven. And that's where he turns you to the cross, what Jesus Christ did on the cross. He was bruised for our iniquity. He was chastised for our peace. Our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Right? They crucified a man. They beat him beyond recognition. They ripped his beard out. They spit upon him. They mocked him. They whipped him to where he was bleeding profusely. And when they finally nailed him to a cross, he bled out on the cross. He died to pay the price for sin, the sin of the world. He died, was buried, and three days... He rose from the dead, proving that it was God Almighty, God manifest in the flesh, that was nailed to the cross. It was God's blood that was shed. And that blood can wash your sins away. Make them whiter than snow. Make your garments whiter than snow. Confess both of those in prayer. When you come to that broken point and that belief is down here, you come to God in prayer and you confess your repentance and your belief to God in prayer and ask Him to save you. The gospel is simple, yet the Bible talks about if the gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. Do you know what that means? It means it's hid to those who want to be lost. They want to go to hell. They don't want to go to heaven. They don't want to be saved. They choose the world. They choose the flesh. That's why it comes back to repentance. It comes back to the first step of salvation. For the sorrows of the world worketh 
death. Their sin is more important. This world is more important. Things of this world is more important. Brothers and sisters Christ, the brethren that are in ministry, you need to take the time, anytime the gospel comes up, you need to take five or ten minutes to preach the gospel in that video. Stop being lazy. Stop being lazy. Take some time. Brothers and sisters Christ, prayer request. We get back on fire for the Lord. Get back on fire for prayer. Get back on fire for reading, studying, and hiding God's word in our heart and sharing God's word with people. And we need to get back on fire for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Get back on fire. Okay. Philippians 4, 6 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Let your requests be made known unto God. And brothers and sisters in Christ, I have an email. If you have requests, take it to God first. But if you need help in any way, email some of the brethren. Some of us might be able to help. We need to be talking to one another. Hey, I need help with this. I need help with that. We're going to be talking about something over here. Uh, pr uh, prayer request and a thank you to the Lord. Okay. James 1.5 If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. There's times I come across stuff I don't get. It's like, Lord, I don't get this. I don't get that. And I sit there and I pray. I go for a walk and pray. I just read something in here and I start praying and I start talking to the Lord about it. I don't get it. Sometimes I can look at other brethren and God will show me the truth through brethren that he's shown the truth to and I can learn from them through the Holy Spirit. Sometimes God will show me the truth through my own studies. Okay. You need to stay in prayer. Oh, I just don't get it. Just throw it to the side. I don't get it. Uh, why don't you take a few minutes to pray and talk to God about it and say, Lord, open it to me. I don't get this part. Please. John 17, 15, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from evil. You know, one of the big things about this ministry, brothers and Christ, is to keep our eyes on Jesus Christ. Go back to Enoch again. He had a testimony. What was that testimony? That he pleased God. He kept his eyes on Jesus. Not Je it wasn't Jesus back then, but he kept his eyes on God. Jesus is God manifest in the flesh. Are you keeping your eyes on God manifest in the flesh? Jesus Christ. Are you looking every day with the life that you're living for the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Are you starting to get distracted by the world? Love not the world, neither things in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Hello? Are you starting to fall into loving the world more than you love Jesus Christ? Pleasing yourself and the world more than pleasing Jesus, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? God manifest in the flesh? Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that friendship of the world is enemy with God? Whosoever therefore shall be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. All three of those verses that are very important is when you start compromising and falling into those three verses, where you're loving the world, you're conforming to the world, you're starting to be a friend of the world, evil starts coming in. I pray that not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, because God, worst case scenario, God can kill you and bring you home early and say, okay, and you, you miss out on rewards, you'll lose out on the inheritance. You won't be able to be down here to help brother. Remember what Paul said? He had that, I don't know if people say it's a vision, it's a dream, or he actually died when they stoned him and he got a glimpse of heaven, and he comes back and he talks to us and he says, to be with Christ is far better. He got to see heaven. Be with Christ is far better. But to be here with you is much more needful. Brother says Christ, we, if you're here, it's because God wants you here to help encourage the brethren and be a light to be, that's an encouragement to the brethren and to be a light to this dark world. He's got you here for a reason. There's times where I call, I say, can we come home today? Is today the day? You know? Lord's like, nope, I need you there. Don't worry, you'll come home. God's got it all planned out. We'll come home when he says, he'll call me home in death, or he'll call me home in life at the catching away of the body of Christ. But we pray that thou should not take them out of the world, but thou should keep them from evil. We need to be praying for the brothers and sisters in Christ today. Okay? They don't conform to the world. They don't start love the world. They don't start being a friend to the world. In other words, that they don't become part of the falling away. 
the brothers and sisters of Christ don't start becoming part of the falling away. They once stood for the truth, they fall away from the truth. They once stood for doctrines, and they fall away to false doctrines. They once stood for sanctification, God cleaned up their life, now they're trying to resurrect the old man and go back to doing things the world's way, the flesh's way. It's the falling away. We need to be praying for that, brothers and sisters Christ. Romans 1, nine. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayer. Brothers and sisters Christ, every day are you praying for the, for the brethren out there? Brethren you don't even know, and brethren that you know. Are you praying for the whole body of Christ as a whole? I pray for a lot of brethren. There's a lot of brethren that broke fellowship with me. I still pray for them. There's a lot of brethren out there. I don't know who you are. I don't know every brother and sister in Christ out there that's saved, but I pray for you. I know brethren that, are, that still have fellowship with me that I pray for. I have brethren that broke fellowship, like I said. And I pray and said, Lord, I miss my brothers in Christ. The ones that thought the world was more important that thought their way was more important, that the flesh was more important, idolatry was more important. Bitterness, pride, angry without a cause, all that stuff was more important. I still pray for them. One of my biggest prayers, brothers and Christ, that I pray all the time is I say, Lord, open the eyes of the blind, both saved and lost. Because it seems like the saved are starting to go back to being blind sometimes in some areas of their life. And you know what I also say? I always look at the Lord. I, I look up or I'm closing my eyes and bowing my head. And I say, Lord, that includes this man right here. Open my eyes to where I'm blind. Where I'm failing you. Where I'm making mistakes, oh Lord. Are we praying for the brethren left and right? You need to get back to praying for the brethren left and right. And then, of course, uh, Romans 10.1, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. I still look at those videos. There's a few live videos of the, of the wailing wall, they call it, where they're all praying by it. And I come across it every other day, and I just say, Lord, how bad is it in Israel? And Lord, I pray that they get, as many of them can get saved today before they have to go into that time period. People always jumping it down saying, we need to pray for the people. And I said this before, you need to pray for the peace of Israel we need to pray that they get saved today so they don't have to go into that time period of Jacob's trouble. Okay? And the peace of Israel that we pray for that's talked about, I believe, is the time of Jacob's trouble. It's when Jesus was there to try to bring in the day of the Lord, the kingdom of heaven, where he's going to rule and reign for a thousand years. And that in the, in the future, when it comes, you're supposed to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Okay? Today, I pray more than anything that they get saved. Well, who, the, what few Jews will get saved can still get saved because predominantly they're just going to reject Jesus Christ. Okay. So, brothers and sisters Christ, I'm sorry. My, my heart this morning, I've been praying and praying. And this has really been on my heart. So please, please don't get all offended and put up these shields. Oh, he can't be talking about me. Brothers and sisters Christ, look into your heart in prayer, studying the Word of God, and look into your heart and make sure that you're evaluating your walk with the Lord and that it lines up with this book. Not with that man, not with this man right here that you're watching behind a camera, or a man who wears a nice suit and tie in one of these battle buildings, that your life lines up with them and what we say. Make sure your life, that what we say lines up with this, and make sure that your life lines up with the Word of God. Like I said, I can be wrong, if you think I'm wrong, come talk to me. And my attitude is, is um, I might be wrong, but this book is always right. Let's find out where I'm wrong, and this book is 100% right, because it's always 100% right. Please, don't get all prideful and puffed up, and just get to this attitude of, hey, I'm not going to listen. I'm not going to listen. I'm not going to listen. I'm trying to get this over here. Uh, Brothers and Christ, I'm pouring my heart out to the body of Christ. We need to get back to being of the same mind, of the same judgment. We need to get back to striving together and working together. And I don't mean compromising. I mean brethren need to drop their pride. They need to drop their, their going about to please themselves, to please people around them. And they need to line up with this book. And if we can all get back to lining up to this book, we can all start striving together hardcore. Now, I'm not saying this is going to happen, but I always pray to the Lord. I said, Lord... Please, 
Do something in the body of Christ to unite us and bring us back together and open our eyes before the catching away of the body of Christ. Almost like having a revival among saved brethren when it comes to our walk with the Lord and being on fire to work together and loving one another and working together for the gospel and to preach God's word. Okay. Everyone seems to be an independent. I'm independent. I'm a one-man show. I'm a one-man show. God never intended ministry to be a one-man show. It's not. And remember, I never claim to be full-time ministry, and I don't like the fact of just me being here by myself. I don't. We've done studies on how lonely I, I feel and how brethren feel being lonely in these last days, and we're so separated. I understand, brother, says Christ. But I always pray for that. I said, Lord, do something to wake us up. Do something to get us really motivated for you. Okay? Prayer request. Okay, I have a, uh, There's a brother and sister in Christ that has their own little, you can call it a ministry, God's ministry. They're, uh, they're serving the Lord in their way over in um, Belgium. And I've been blessed with being able to send them Bibles. They start leading people to Christ. They start leading people to the truth because it's very hardcore Catholic over there. And I'm able to send Bibles to them. But I want to do an update, just a real up update. It says, And I might have read some of this before, but there's some new stuff. Um, hello, brother. All is well with us. Praise God. We, we hear all kinds of things that are happening over there in Europe. So, hello, brother. All is well with us. Thank you again for the beautiful Bibles you sent us. Our group has also grown here from day to day. Every day new people are added who show interest in the word of our Lord. Many people are interested in the Bible and discover many new things that they did not find or had never heard of in their other Catholic Bibles. Thanks to our Lord. We hope that we can show the truth to many, pe many more people in the places in our small country. We are extremely grateful for this every day. They're doing work for the Lord. They're on fire for the Lord. Now, they're not, I'm not saying everybody that they reach out to gets saved, but they're getting interested in this. And that's what they're doing. They're getting people to replace their Catholic Bibles with the perfect written Word of God. And you stay in this, and if you start believing in this, and you start loving this, they're going to come to the true plan of salvation, and they're going to get saved. Okay, and they're preaching the gospel. Don't get me wrong, they're preaching the gospel. But they're also getting people bought King James Bibles. And I'm trying to help out as best I can, brothers and sisters, by God's grace. I, I want God to get all the glory. For anything I do for him, for anything that the, these brothers and sisters in Christ are doing for him, to God be the glory. But brothers and sisters in Christ, you can start out small. If there's two or three of you, you can start out by going to the park and sitting there and preaching the word. Anybody who's interested, you can sit there and start reading things from the Bible to them. And saying, this is that this book is, because most of the time, brothers and sisters Christ, a little side note, I find that most of the time, 90 to 99% of the time, I'm dealing with people who already have, already have a preconceived idea of religion, of Jesus' death, death, burial, and resurrection. Okay, I always say this, what's the difference between us and them? You have the Catholics, the Mormons, uh, the Jehovah's Witness, you have all these different denominations. They believe that Jesus died for their sins, was buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures are to them according to word of mouth sometimes but they believe in the death burial and resurrection of jesus christ and that jesus christ died for the sins of the world why aren't they saved if that's all there is with these faith alone heretics why aren't they saved? because they'll say catholics aren't saved jehovah's witnesses aren't saved mormons aren't saved there's more to it you look into it mormons don't believe jesus is god that it was god's blood that was shed on the cross the other thing is, is they take repentance. That's the biggest thing, brothers and Christ. In these last days, they take repentance out or they change the definition of repentance. It's just acknowledging that you're a sinner or uh, admitting that you're a sinner. No, the whole world does that. That's not repentance. Repentance is coming to God broken and having sorrow for your sins, having regret for ever sinning against God. These people that admit they're sinners... They love their sin. They don't regret sinning. They love their sin. What they regret is the consequences. The sorrows of the world work at death. But they don't ever regret sinning itself. They love their sin. They love living their way and doing things their way, the world's way. Okay. This is what's going to separate them. You need to get a King James Bible, believe in it, 
and it'll show you the truth and that's what's going on up there. They're trying to show this predominantly Catholic uh, country the truth through the Word of God. Okay. Recently I got another request, praise God. Uh, hello brother, how are you there? Uh, here the good weather finally starts with pleasant and sometimes already warm days. Okay. Yes, today I'll show some pictures, I might pop them up here, uh, of my garden and the chickens. Because I'll give a little update on the chickens. For people who have been praying for my chickens, I got the garden going so I could always use prayer for my garden. Brother says Christ, I pray for the work of men's, the brothers and sisters Christ's hand, that God will bless the work of our hands. Good work that we're doing, not the bad work. The good work that we're doing for the Lord that pleases God, that we can give God all the glory. That God blesses the work of our hands. So I got my garden going because it is getting into spring. Ooh, we got some thunderstorms coming though too. We just got we got really warm days, so I planted everything, and now it's starting to get cold again. And I think I felt a little rumble, just a little bit of a rumble. But he's letting us know that it's getting warm over there, and they're going to start doing things. Praise God! May God bless the work of your hands, brothers and sisters of Christ. That's over here. Since we are now going to work in and around our house again. We have to postpone the trips in our country until after that time. If you don't remember some other times I was talking about how they were, uh, they'd go to the parks and they'd travel around. They'd preach the gospel. They'd sit there and do Bible readings where they just read out of the King James Bible and anybody wants to come and listen, here's truth. And they're like, I never heard that before. Not in, not in my Catholic Bibles and not in these uh, temples, Catholic temples. I, never, I don't hear what you're, what you're saying. I don't hear that kind of reading. But they're, they're having to get work because we always have to get hardcore work when it's springtime. It's time to plant seeds. It's time to, the brush is growing out of control. It's time to cut things back. It's time to get some work done real quick. Okay. Since that time, we have been able to reach some people who are open to the gospel of our Lord. Partly because of this, the question whether we can order these two Bibles. And they asked for two more Bibles, which the Lord blessed me with being able to send. To God be the glory. So, uh, just to keep praying for these Bibles, brothers and as part of this ministry, uh, that I didn't even plan this. I did not plan this. This has to do with being open to the Lord and saying, Lord, I want my ministry to be this way. And then all of a sudden God goes, eh, I need you to do this over here instead. I know brethren who have ruined their ministry because they keep pushing it in a direction that's not what God wants for them. And it's sad. I'm not being mean or anything. I'm just saying it's sad. When you see that God has a blessing for him and he wants him in this part of the ministry. Remember, we all have different gifts and different work to do for the Lord. But in this part of the ministry, they keep pushing this over here. And they start failing the Lord and they start being not as much used to the Lord because I called you over here. I never planned to be a ministry that's just buying Bibles and mailing Bibles out to other countries. And God has blessed me with it. And I just, Lord, if that's what you want for me, I'll do it. You know my heart, brother, says Christ, if you follow this ministry, I'd love to have a house church. I'd love to be part of a house church. I'd like to be part of a meeting house, a prayer house, where brethren are coming together. I'd love to be part of street witnessing with a group of brethren, because before two or three witnesses, by all means, go out and gospel track. By all means, go out and lay out gospel tracks, hand gospel tracks. When doors open, witness for Jesus Christ. But if you're going to be a street preacher... You need to go out in two by two, two minimum. Okay, by the by, the words of two, one, two or three men, let every word be established. You're supposed to have two. Okay, I'd love to be part of that, but God's like, that's just not what I have. But Lord, I want the. That's just not what I have. I continue doing what you're doing. The videos praise the Lord. Uh, the Bibles praise the Lord. Praying for brethren, helping brethren out whenever I can. Like I said, if you got requests, email me. I miss the testimonies I used to get from brethren. I miss the prayer requests and the emails that I get from brethren. And in the comment section here, if you got any email, uh, prayer requests, please put it in the comment section. Okay. But I got a brother and sister in Christ over there, and they're working hard for the Lord. I want to say if I'm leaving anything else. We also oh no, that's something else. Uh, they're making them pay, in, like when I mail Bibles to them, in order to get the mail from them, they attach another fee that they have to pay a fee to get the package. So it's like being double, 
tax, like here in America, where they double, triple, quadruple tax things. Um, but brothers and sisters Christ, pray for this brother and sister in Christ over there. They're doing a good work for the Lord. Okay? Pray for our brethren. I want us to get back on fire like them. I want us to be able to start coming together and going out and witnessing for Jesus Christ. Coming together. One of the things that if I could do a house church, because I mentioned it before real quick, is that I'd get back to where we do Bible reading. Yes, we can do Bible studies and preach the Word, but get back to doing Bible reading, where we're reading a chapter a day out loud of the Pauline epistles. We can pre start reading the Psalms and Proverbs. We can go back to reading some of the Gospel out loud. But reading, hearing the Word of God just being read out loud. One chapter. Okay, it's read. Okay, now we're going to get into a Bible study. We're going to sing some hymns, and then we're going to get into some Bible studies. We need to get back to hearing the Word of God. Speaking the Word of God. Not our own feelings and opinions, stories, testimonies. They're good. Testimonies are good. You know, examples. But just hearing the Word of God being read. Speaking the Word. Actually, read, uh, speaking the Word of God word for word. And hearing the Word of God being read word for word. Uh, if you don't know about this, I encourage you to get Alexander Scorvey. I think the DVD is in the other room. I have it on my tablet, and I sit there, and I listen to it all the time and just hear the Word of God. There's times in the morning where I'll sit, and I'll read the Word of God out loud, and I'll stop in places to talk to him about it, say, Lord, what does this mean? Am I following this? Does this line up with me, or do I line up with what it's saying about the world? Where am I at, Lord? Help me to be with you, O Lord. Help me to please you, O Lord. Okay? But the Bible needs to be heard, it needs to be read, it needs to be spoken. Another great prayer request I have, I'm getting older, 44, I turned 44 last month. Okay? 44, but with my seizure disorder and the, the way my body feels, every day I feel like I'm 64, sometimes 84. Spiritually, I feel like I'm 2,000 years old, I'm exaggerating, but in 10 years, of, it's getting close to 10 years of being saved, that 10 years feels like a million spiritually. The struggles I've had, the mistakes I've made, uh, the way this world has fallen apart, and I'm just doing my best to keep climbing high mountains. Why? Because I'm trying to make my way home. This isn't my home. My home's up there. And while I'm down here, because it's much needful for the brethren, and needful for me to preach the gospel to the lost world and be a light to this dark world, I'm making my way home. <laughs> Brothers of Christ, don't forget that. We're making our way home. Okay? But this is what's important. Prayer is what's important. And this is a great testimony that they're getting this in the hands of people, getting God's perfect written word in people's hands that have been denied God's word that have been lied to and deceived. Prayer, reading God's word, hiding it in your heart, and living it, brother, sister, in Christ. Please, 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 heed my words. Heed the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. I just heard a lot of, I get 50 million pigeons now trying to get into the chicken feed. I just heard them all, just something scared them. Uh, you might not have heard it on the camera. But brother, sister, Christ, heed my words. Help me not get distracted by the world when I'm trying to preach truth. Um, Brothers of Christ, please, please, I'm here. If you want to talk, I'm here. If you disagree with me, I'm here. But Brothers of Christ, make sure that we're praying for one another. Make sure that you're getting back on fire for this book. And that you're starting your day with this book, you're ending your day with this book, and you're spending time all day praying with the Lord. And if you've got time to play Alexander Scorby and listen to him as you're doing work, as you're setting, if you're going for a walk, you can have one ear. I suggest only one ear in. Always keep, when you're going out for walks and stuff, you keep you don't be, be like those people that have two ears in listening to satanic music that's so loud, they don't even know what's going on around them. You can do one ear, and then that way you can still hear what's going on around you, and you're hearing God's word as you're going for a walk. Whether it's on the beach, in the park, uh, going for a walk in the neighborhood, you know, try to do everything you can to get this word, that this word is the most important thing to you every day. That you want to listen to it, and you want to hide it in your heart every day. So, brothers and Christ, I love you. Even the ones that turn their back on me and stab me in the back, I'm still praying for them. I love them. I want to see them come back to a standing point. I want to see us all standing together. Okay? With this is the foundation that we're all standing on. Okay, if you want to say that we're all standing on, this is the foundation I want to see us all standing on. I love you. 
Okay, and my love for you is in Christ Jesus. So I'm going to end this with grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.